Okay, so the key thing about the catalyst that you need to know is that catalyst actually is the substance that's going to speed up your reaction. And then it has a property that the catalyst will never be consumed. And it will never appear on either side of your chemical reaction. So when we write a chemical equation, we know the things on the left side is the reactant. On the right side is your product. The catalyst will never show on either side. The only place the catalyst will show up is above this arrow. So that's the only place you will see the catalyst show up. So if a question asks you, I have species A, B, C, D on the left, D, E, F, G on the right, point out which one is your catalyst, the answer will be none of them. It should not actually show up in your chemical reaction. So what does the catalyst do? It's actually related to the activation energy. This is actually the type of curve, okay, when you have catalyst versus without catalyst, how it should look like. This actually reaction progress, this is energy, right? We actually went through this one in the very beginning of the class, right? That's your reactant, that's your product. So this actually is your, your edge, right? Okay, and this is actually an endothermic reaction, right? That is actually your activation energy, right? So you can see without a catalyst, you have actually much higher activation energy on this plot. And once you add in the catalyst, what it does is actually it lower down that much of the energy, right? So why is it important to lower down your activation energy? It can be explained by this part, okay, this plot, okay? So we say this exponential terms contain this Ea and the T, right? That means at a given temperature, there's only certain population of the, of the molecule is going to have higher energy than the Ea, which can actually give you the reaction product, right? So you can think about this, okay, assuming that is a distribution, the energy distribution of your molecule. And then this is actually your activation energy. Okay, that means actually only this portion of the molecule is capable of actually produce the product. So right now you're in your catalyst. What it does is it lower down your activation energy. Okay, on the plot, what it means actually it push this one back to a lower energy. What's going to happen is actually right now you have this much extra molecules. They are actually higher in energy than your activation energy, right? Which means actually all their things can actually contribute to your product formation. So that's why the catalyst is actually powerful. What it does is actually lower down the activation energy. So that's the very key concept that you should have, catalyst. We know the only thing you do is actually change or lower your activation energy, right? So let's say things it does. The things it does not change is actually it did not change your equilibrium. So remember this thing, this chapter is talking about what? Talking about the kinetics, right? It's actually talking about how fast the reaction can occur. The catalyst is going to lower down the activation energy. That means actually the conversion from your reactant to product, this process will be speed up. But it did not actually affect the final equilibrium constant K, the capital K, okay? This one is not affected. So this is actually a very, very important concept that you should actually know because in your homework, they will ask you what are the belongings that the catalyst will change? I guarantee you, they will say the equilibrium is one of them in the question. That is not the answer you should select. The only thing you should select that the catalyst can change is what? Activation energy, okay? It's going to lower down your activation energy. That's the only answer you should select, nothing else. Okay, so the very last one. Okay, I want to use one minute to finish this slide, then we can actually finish chapter 11. So there are two types of catalysts. Okay, one is called, called the homogeneous catalyst, the other one is actually heterogeneous, right? 
Homogeneous means actually your catalyst has the same phase as your reactant. And one of the most famous example is the enzyme. Okay, so the enzyme in our body actually exists in the solution form, right, or in the aqueous form. And all the reactant you have in your body is also in the solution form. Okay, so since the phase are the same, then we call it as homogeneous catalyst. And the most famous heterogeneous catalyst is actually the catalyst you have in your car. So once you actually do these combustions in your engine, right, you produce a lot of CO, carbon monoxide, and those are toxic gas. Before you can actually uh, release those things into the environment, okay, into run through this uh, catalyst, the main purpose of the catalyst is actually convert CO become non-toxic CO2. So they can actually get released into the air. And for this non for this heterogeneous catalyst, okay, so the reaction occur is going to involve four steps. Okay. The first step is actually the adsorption. Okay, so you're reacting to actually absorb on the surface of your catalyst. And they are going to migrate on the surface so that they can encounter to let the reaction to occur. Okay, and then once the reaction occurs, then it dissolves. So the AM RD is actually the most standard step for a heterogeneous catalyst, uh, how they actually can catalyze the reaction. So that's all the things you need to know for this chapter 11.